then we can uh, look into these words, see what we can glean from them that will help us in our present day life. Amen. So I will just read through. Uh, Exodus chapter 4, verse 1, thus it is read, When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put a cloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice and with a bitter cry and cried even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and in every province Whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing. And many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maid and her chamberlain came and told her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for her chest, went up to the king's chamberlain, whom he had appointed upon Esther, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatshepsut went forth to Mordecai under the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasury for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Susan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make request before him for her people. And Hatshepsut came and told Esther the word, uh, the word of Mordecai uh, again, yeah, again Esther, again Esther, spake unto Hatshepsut, gave him commandment unto Mordecai, all the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king in the inner court, who is not called, wherein is one law, that that one, uh, that he would be put to death, except, such, uh, uh, except whom the king shall hold out golden center, scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told Mordecai Esther's word. Then Mordecai commanded it to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether hold thy, holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai. Uh, this answer, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Susan and party for me 
and neither eat nor drink three days, uh, night or day. I also and my name will fast. Likewise, so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. If I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Praise God. Praise God. May the Lord add his blessing to these words. Amen. And so, this is a, a very touching story. Like story here, a very touching one. And um, I, I, I thought about it, that the time that we are now living in, this can be of great encouragement, this Bible story. And if you ever read through the book of Esther, you'll find a whole lot more encouraging occurrences that took place the time uh, when Esther uh, decided to uh, take the risk by faith to present herself uh, in the presence of, of the king and uh, not knowing what her state would be. But she decided that whatever it cost, he said, if I perish, I perish, that must be the case. Because they were in great trouble. They were in great mourning and crying and fasting. As, you, as we know, the reason for all of this. We know that the enemy had decided to eliminate God's children. Haman, Haman, decided to eliminate God's children by plotting against them and uh, requested, sent letters, wrote letters, and uh, sent it to the king for him to seal, uh, to approve it and everything like that. And he sent it all over the province of uh, uh, this empire king in this in this in this country. So therefore, you know, the Jews were there. The Jews were all into this land, the Persian, and therefore they, being there, the enemy was not satisfied that they were there were still able to function as God's people. Even though they were not on their own land, but yet wherever they went, they had the fear of God with them. They maintained God's uh, commandment, and God's protection was with them, regardless of what the enemy tried to do. And so, uh, Mordecai told Esther all what Haman had planned to do to eliminate the Jewish people, God's chosen people. And uh, Mordecai, um, he, he was the one who took care of Esther from way back. And so they were related here. And um, so Mordecai, being the one who took care of Esther, tried to show her that even though she was into that position where she was considered favored, where she was the chosen one, she was chosen by the king, However, regardless of all of this, all of her achievements, she 
still need to remember her people. Even though it seems as if she was safe, it seems as if she was well taken care of, being in such a position. She was chosen to be the queen. And so, um, Mordecai decided to consult her and to let her know the plight that the Jewish people were in, the condition that they were in. They were about to be destroyed by the plot of Haman, wicked Haman had set against the Jews. So, Mary, so Esther decided that Mordecai told her, say, look, Esther, ah, uh, consider this. Don't take it for granted because you are in the king's palace that you going to be, you going to escape the wrath and the destruction of the of the king just because of your position. Because at this time, if you hold your peace, if you don't do something because you're in the position, if you don't make, if you don't intervene and the Jewish behalf, God's people behalf. If you don't do that, if you refuse to do it. God has God had other ways that he can deliver his people. Enlargement Lord. from other areas, from other ways that God God who is unlimited in power, unlimited in resources. Ah, uh, God can do anything but fail. So Mordecai was trying to show Esther here that um, if you hold your peace, God will make a way out of way that you don't even know about it. And who knows it? That you come into the kingdom at this time. This might be the great reason. This might be the, the right time. This might be the perfect time for you to, uh, for you being in the kingdom so that you can use your authority and your influence to help to deliver God's people. One of the things, and while I'm speaking, if someone has a question, you can feel free. Feel free to ask the question. But what I observe is that God does not uh, rely on any one person to do his will, to do his work. And no one person can hold God's were accosted. No matter how they think that they have power and authority, no matter how they think that they have influence and, and fame, God doesn't depend on any one person to do anything. God always has other means and ways. So this is the reason why Mordecai had told it to Esther that if you hold your peace, God will is able to open another door, another way, another avenue to deliver his people. Because we are the ones who depend on God. God don't have to depend on us. This is a privilege that we have. The, the opportunity that we have to do anything for the Lord is a privilege. 
it and a great opportunity. And uh, I think we should use it to reach other people and to use it to glorify God, but not to uh, set up ourselves and be comfortable in our comfort zone and think if everything is okay because I'm God's anointed. And we got to realize that God didn't put us, God didn't call us. He didn't just call us to go to heaven. God didn't just call us, amen, for us just to be waiting to be raptured. God had called us, and he put us to work, and we need to use the opportunity and the privilege to reach, amen, other folks who are in danger, who are in bondage, who are in sin. So I'm using this now, that Esther, the, the Jews, God's people, here they were in a, in, in a condition where their life was in jeopardy. Amen. But I want to tell you this, saying that who God bless no man curse. Who God bless, no man can curse. And it doesn't matter what, where you find yourself in life. Even if you find yourself in hell, God is able to bring you out. God is able to bring us out. If we find ourselves in hell, God will send help down in hell and deliver us out of hell. Whatever the condition. When I say hell, I'm talking about unpleasant situations. And pleasant condition. Oh, oh bless the name of the Lord Jesus. And pleasant circumstances. And pleasant, very unpleasant. It can be sickness, it can be all kind of uh, unpleasant circumstances. But God will not leave us. And sometimes the enemy do these things too. Sometimes the enemy did a whole other thing to us. The Bible tells us that in Revelation, that the enemy has cast, he has cast some of God's people in prison. The devil. Oh yeah. He cast also Paul and Silas in prison. Yeah. But God will never leave himself without a witness. He sent help to deliver Paul and Silas. Even though they were bound, they were in bondage. Hands and feet were in bondage. But don't write them off. Oh no. Don't write them off. God sent help. And so, it is very good when we can find ourselves at the place where God can use us to help somebody. Hallelujah. Regardless of what condition that they are going through, what their circumstances are, God can use you, God can use this one, God can use anyone. Even to pray, we can pray. Even to give a word of exhortation, we can do that. To give a word of encouragement, we can do that. And we should be happy to do it. We should, we should never think it hard to encourage someone, speak to someone, speak life into their life. Especially when we look and see the, 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 the condition that they are in. Amen. And uh, their life might be down. Their life might be in jeopardy. So here the Jews, they were in jeopardy, but there was one who God put into place uh, to act as a mediator, to act on their behalf of Esther. And if Esther didn't use her, uh, the privilege that she had, 
and the position, the position that she had, and she never used it to help, amen, her brothers and sisters, God would find somebody else to do the job. Hallelujah. But God is not short of people. When we find ourselves able to do something to help somebody, let us do it with cheerfulness, with joy, because it's a blessing that God uses using us to do uh, uh, to, to bless somebody or to encourage someone, Amen, or to edify someone. It's a blessing. Hallelujah to God. And so here, Esther, Amen. She decided that she got to approach the king because her people were in trouble. And she called up all the people and said, look, her maiden and others, it's a fault for me, everybody. A matter of fact, next week is past week. Just in case everybody didn't hear it, next week. The week of fasting and prayer started Monday through Saturday. Amen. And fasting is very good. Fasting is, it helps to open doors, lock doors, and give victory and deliverance. Amen. And so, therefore, um, here in Esther, Esther 4, as we've been reading, Esther called and her people and said, look, uh, we are in trouble. I just want to emphasize how prayer and fasting is powerful, saying, very powerful. Call them up and say, we are in trouble. We're gonna, we have to do something. We can't be comfortable. We can't be complacent. We got to do something. So he called up everybody. Say, look, we're going to fast. Glory to God. Virgo decided to fast with her maidens and other people fast. Night and day. Amen. We're going to fast. Nobody's going to eat or drink. She said, Amen. Three days. Night and day. They're going to fast. Cause, you know, God's going to do something. She believed that God would do something. Just like Jesus said one time, certain things, certain victory does not realize except by prayer and fasting. Jesus said, these kinds uh, don't, you, you don't get rid of them. These kinds you will not get rid of except by prayer and fasting. Things. There are some things that we need to overcome and we need victory for. It's going to require prayer and fasting. Hallelujah to God. Help us, Lord. So we are encouraged. This very scripture here is a, is a testament. Amen. To encourage us. Whatever we are going through. So Esther said, look. It's not according to the rule. For anyone who was not invited to come in the presence of the king. It's not customary that anybody venture to do that for the presence of the king, except if they were invited. So Esther was saying, I, I was not invited. I'm not invited. But there is a great need here. Lord help us, Jesus. And uh, this drill, this, amen, uh, this train must be broken by faith. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to the king. Ah. You see, to believe that by praying and fasting that God will work. And this is a good example to show to us today that God will remove hindrances. God will open doors for us. Hallelujah to God. So Esther said, I'm going. 
And if I perish, I perish. But I have to be, I have to present myself to the king because my people are in trouble. And she decided, amen, and she went. And, uh, but you know what? It was not the law for anyone to do that, but God went ahead of her. Hallelujah to God. God went ahead of her before she even knew that God was already working. God went ahead touch the heart of the king. While they were praying, while they were fasting, while they were seeking the Lord, God went ahead and did the job. So when Esther got there, the job was already done. The king held out his scepter and invited Esther to come in. Come on in, Esther. Oh my God. I can just imagine how she was elated. I can just imagine how she was excited, knowing that it was a risk and her life was in jeopardy because it was not according to the law for anyone to, to, to present themselves to the king except they were invited. But she said, well, if I perish, I perish, I'm going. Lord help us, Jesus. Saints, a lot of times it takes courage it takes courage to get a breakthrough. Whatever your breakthrough is, whatever my breakthrough is, it takes courage, amen, to push. Hallelujah. And to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Seek the Lord differently. Not just the everyday regular routine. Sometimes the everyday regular routine is going to take more than that. Sometimes it takes more than that. Oh, glory to God. To break the yoke. Cause the yoke. Bring deliverance. Oh, bless me of the Lord Jesus. Any question? Any question? And uh, again, the, the king held out his scepter. And invited Esther. And so Esther could have, she, she was welcome in the presence of the king. And then now, when she got there, she started relating to the king her reason for risking her life, her reason for approaching him, her reason for making her way there even though it was not permitted normally. Saints, God and Christ, yet we have a king. We have a king that is greater than the Persian king. Greater than the Persian king. He is the king of kings. And he's the Lord of Lords. If Esther could obtain mercy, the present of a, uh, just a man, if Esther could have obtained grace and favor in the present of just a man, normal man like anybody else, he, he was not God, he was not the Lord. He can't forgive sin. He couldn't. Now, if Esther could obtain mercy and grace and favor by way of fasting and prayer, how much more will we obtain mercy and grace and favor in the presence of the Lord when we approach him? The Lord Jesus right now is ready to hold out his scepter to welcome us. I come on, Messiah. Say, come on. But we need to approach him differently. It's not the everyday routine. Hallelujah to God. There are some things that we got to amen the double up ourselves, which will never be done except by prayer and fasting.
which will never be done except you and talk to the Lord. Which will never be done except, amen, amen, bless God, make a roundabout turn, 100 degrees. Amen. Good God, 180 degree turn. Hallelujah. God, Jesus is waiting right, right now. Jesus is, is waiting right now for anybody to come to him. Esther found favor in the, in the uh, eyes of the king. We will find favor in the, in the sight of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nobody merciful, more merciful than Jesus. There is no one more kinder than Jesus. There is no one that is more sympathetic, hallelujah to God, than Jesus. No one. Oh, glory to God. And Jesus can do exceedingly above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above more than what the king of Persia, the Persian king was able to do. Our Lord Jesus is able to do more. We are in good hands, saints. We are in good hands. We are in good hands. We are well favored. We are in good hands. Let us not be intimidated to, to approach Jesus. Let us not, amen, be fearful to approach Jesus. Whatever our needs are, whatever our requests are, whatever our conditions are, doesn't matter. He is greater than the Persian king. That Esther found favor and her request was granted. Hallelujah to God. How much more our God that we serve. The lifestyle and the faith and the courage of Esther is a testament to us today that we can approach God and he will answer our request. He will grant us our request. Esther, amen. God went ahead and touched the heart of the king to do that, to, to grant Esther uh, such a great request. Grant Esther's request and to welcome her. Amen. So what is your request, Esther? Give it to you, to the half of my kingdom. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And you know this story well. When Esther started open up to her, I mean to him, said, he started to tell the king the plot of Haman. Devious plot. Wicked plot. He called my hatred. And all the things that he planned to do, he paid money. Amen paid money to destroy God's people. Let me tell you something, saints. The devil will do anything to destroy us. He's working around the clock to destroy us. But no weapon form against us. Hallelujah. Shall prosper. No weapon. Yes. They may form. Yes, they will form. But they will not come to fruition. Oh, glory to God. No weapon from against us shall prosper. Oh, Lord. Amen. We have a God who is mighty. He's pulling down a stronghold. No matter what is going on out here. We are favored. Well favored. Glory to God. We are blessed. Saints, we are blessed. Esther went, but Esther didn't just go. She, just, she, she didn't just go like that. She go worshiping. It's like he, he, worshiping not the king. She wasn't worshiping. She did not worship the king. But she go with the attitude of worshiping her true and living God. 
chosen, chosen that mood of worship. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Did you know that even when we when we come to service, we are to come with the, in the mood and the spirit of worship? Oh, Lord, help us, Lord. Wherever we are, whenever we head, whenever we head to the house of God, we are to we are to go there, Amen, with the spirit and the attitude of worship, not waiting until when we get there. We are we are ready into that, Amen, uh, atmosphere, mindset, desire, Hatamashaya. And when we do that, and when we get there, then it's a big blow. It's a big blaze. Everybody came together with their, with their lamp, amen, burning. So when everybody came together, it's going to be a big blaze. Oh, Lord. As we can see, God worked so powerfully Sunday, mightily. Oh, Lord of mercy. So mightily, so powerfully. Glory to God. Amen. Because... Uh, we were just, amen, and that togetherness and, and, and that level, amen, to reach God. And God pour out upon us. Great blessing. Hallelujah to God. So, saints of God in Christ Jesus, with these uh, uh, evidence, all these, uh, amen, great evidences that we have, we have seen and proven, oh, God will work. As he works for Esther, he will work for us. That is no respect of person. No. But in every nation, they that fear at him. Amen. And do it righteousness. Is accepted with him. That is no respect of person. Amen. God doesn't respect Esther more than us. All we need to do is to fear ourselves. All we need to do is to seek the Lord deeper. All we need to do, amen, is to do some more fasting and praying and everything like that and stay focused. God will make the way. Saints, whatever you are waiting for, it might be healing. It might be some hindrance in your way. God go make the way as we seek him. It might be some doors that you need to op- to, to, to be op- open. God's going to allow those doors to open. Yes. But there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Glory. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Things. We are in good hands. Better hands than all states. No matter what. Better hands. We are in better hands than all states. I always like to quote men to mention because I always see this, uh, these hands up there in television screen telling us that we are in good hands when we uh, take out policy for them. It's telling us we are in good hands. That means that you don't have to worry about anything. Only to find out when you file your claim. You can't get no <laughs> no response whatsoever. Reasonable response. Yet they told you down the road that you are in good hands. But when you're ready to file your claim, they're giving you the running around. Yeah. Your insurance premium, look, you can't miss one payment. And ready to, to lapse it. You can't miss one payment. But when you're ready to get your benefits and uh, file your claim and get your benefits, it takes forever. And even though you still don't get what you deserve, hallelujah. Yet they said, we are in good hands. But I want to tell you this. If there are any good hands, only Jesus. That's the only good hand. He never weak. Doesn't grow weary. He's not short. That he can't reach us. The only good hand. 
the, the king held out his hand with his scepter. Jesus is holding out his hand right now. He's holding out his scepter to you, to me, to every one of us. He's holding it out. We just have to go boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy to help us in time of need. Oh Lord, oh God, have mercy. Thank you, Lord. We are in good hands. Thank you, Lord, we are in your hands. Esther got the victory. To make a long story short, the, the life of the, of the Jewish people were saved. Yes, if you read the book of Esther, they were delivered from the enemy. They were saved because God was fighting for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Yes. And the enemy that plot to kill them, he was killed. Oh Lord of mercy. When the enemy came up against us like a flood, the spirit of the Lord was lifted up a standard against him. We are well protected. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. You know it. No weapon. Amen. Oh, neither shall they come near us. But he has, gave, he, has, he has given his angels charge over us, to protect us, to guide us in all our ways. Go along his way. Victory is certain things. Victory is certain. Great scripture, wonderful scripture. Very encouraging. Very edifying. That the Lord holding out his scepter. The Lord is extending his mercy. The Lord is extending his forgiveness. The Lord is holding out his kindness. Hallelujah. The Lord is holding out his provision. Hallelujah to God. Hato Messiah. Glory. The Lord is holding out his favor to each and every one of us tonight. Oh, what a wonderful God. What a great God we serve. Not the king, not the Persian king, amen, who was gracious enough to have done that. We have a greater, more everlasting, not only our king, but our creator, our savior, our Lord. He's everything to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, thank God bless you. Is there anyone that has any question that you would like to pose? Amen. It's a beautiful scripture. It's a beautiful lesson. Hallelujah to God. It's a beautiful lesson tonight. Amen. That edifies us. But I'm, I'm still making, I'm still making, uh, Open it, open it, or open a, a door of opportunity, um, a window, amen, just for questions or comments. Any questions? Any comments? Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Come on. Yes, yes, I just have um, a backup um, comment pertaining to as you were talking about Esther. I mean, um, I'm looking at the the power of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. The power yes. of faith. Right. I mean, and the spirit of the journey. Yes. Yeah. Um, faith Hallelujah. and the journey. When yes. you have the spirit of the journey, yes. and you put 
Hallelujah. Um, I'm just looking at the the the, uh, in the 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 power, amen, or the authority, amen. Yes. It's the, amen, of that state, amen. And she was looking at, amen. She she of that discerning that if she could just reach right. to the king. That's right. Amen. So dangerous it is, right. then she was able to um, put a petition to the king. And yeah. and the other thing again, uh, we got to confident ourselves in whatever we do put into God. Yeah. Yeah. If you confident yourself, amen, then your faith will reach to the the maximum because um, your, uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit <laughs> the kingdom of God. No, it takes faith, amen, and endurance, amen. I take discerning because I'm just looking at even us. Let us okay, we, we, um, we were reading, or uh, we were, um. We are looking in the lesson and pertaining to Esther here as one one of the um, perennial of faith. Yes, she was, because it's faith she used. Amen. Yeah. To put herself in that danger. And even with us, um, we have to, uh, we should really look at the power, amen, of discernment and faith that when, whatever our desire or whatever command we get yeah. or amen whatever we let to do pertaining to God or, or the work of God, then we have to discern the consequence of what we are going to do. Amen. Yeah. Then put it faith in in head and just step out. There's not me. Is not this flesh here. So we are subject to feeling. Um, we are dust. Glory to God. Amen. Yes. But the, the real you, the real man is in the dust. Amen. The yes. dust covers the real man. So the faith that is in the real man, glory to God, when it stepped out, amen, discerning the work that is let to do, then, yeah. oh my God Almighty, no power, no demons from America can stop it. Because the, the faith is right there. Amen. To stand. Because God deal with faith. If you don't have faith, then God can't deal with you. Right, right. Because He appreciates faith that you can use it. Amen. As an object. Amen. As the faith yeah. is the substance of things so far. And evidence, when thing, when the evidence is an object that you can see, that you can see, right? I mean, substance, uh, you cannot touch it because it's a liquid. But when yeah. that liquid becomes hard, solid, that's it. It's an object. So it's right there, you can identify. Yes, it is. I Amen. Mean, yep. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. yeah. Yeah. Oh, bless the Lord. God bless you. Yeah. Okay, come in. Good point. Good yeah. point. Thank you for, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, for your input. Amen. Yes. He, oh, yeah. he has, she, she, she had that discernment that uh, something um, would be done. Yeah. Something done uh, by her exercising her faith, and uh, take the risk. She has that discernment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, we, we might not know the outcome, but we believe mm -hmm. that, we believe that the Lord is able mm -hmm. to bring it out. Yeah. We 
he might not, we might not see his head immediately. No. But by but, but by stepping up and reaching yeah, out, yeah. Mm-hmm. reaching out and uh, and exercise that faith, it's it just like the woman. You know, it's like there there were hindrances, there were obstacles in front of her. You know, but she never allowed those things to stop her from pressing. No. And she said, if I can just but touch the hem of his garment. Yes, yes. He believed that something would be done. Big action. Mm. And and there were opposition. Whenever, yeah. whenever, whenever you're going to get a blessing, mm-hmm. whenever, Whenever you are going to get a blessing from God, you're going to face opposition, right? Because the, the devil yeah. don't want you to get it. The enemy don't want you to get it. Mm-hmm. There's going to be opposition. There's going to be some something block. There's going to be some hardship. But we have to press. Mm-hmm. We got to press. Mm-hmm. And that's how a lot of times our breakthrough comes through. We, we, we realize, amen, the, our breakthrough, the result of our yes. pressing. Like uh, some writers say, I'm pressing on the upward way and so forth. New height and getting every day. And so therefore, yeah. But if we get discouraged just because of what we may see, yeah. what we may hear, we could lose our us and our blessings. Esther did not, she was not discouraged. She heard no. I that they were about to uh, destroy them. Mm, destroy the Jews. But she never allowed that. She never allowed no. that to, to quench or to dampen her faith. She did not allow it to dampen her faith. And if I perish, I perish. Yeah. I'm going to get the victory. And she did, she did get the victory. She got it. Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful lesson for us tonight. How we can get victory or whatever it might be. But we just have to dig a little deeper. Mm-hmm. Thank God. Any, any other comments? Thank you, John. Any other comments, any uh, questions so far? Thank you. Anyone else has any comment or question? No. You're free to do so. We are here to encourage one another. We are here to strengthen and to edify each other. Okay. Do you have any comment, Mr. Dante? <laughs> Um, um, no, um, all the thing I would say uh, about the Bible, um, the Bible teaching is that, you know, we just got to make sure we don't be like Haman. We got to make sure we, we not the one causing conflict or the one that's going against it's the work of God. So, you know, uh, we're going against God or, or going against God's people. Wonderful. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Thank you for your the comment. Thank you for your input. Anybody else like to say anything? I'm going to say amen to the word of God. We're going to uh... Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for allowing us to gather together, Lord God, to get yes. more understanding and knowledge out of your word. We thank you for the teaching we received tonight, Lord God, and help us to hide your word in our hearts that we may not sin against thee. The Lord, we pray that you continue to keep us and cover us with our blood. Every day, Lord God, keep us in your secret place, Lord God, and continue to be our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. We give you thanks and we give you praise and we ask that you strengthen us the many, Lord God, and and lead and continue to guide him to lead such a great people as your people. And we ask that you cover Bishop as he comes home today, Lord God. Grant yes. his yes. mercies 
we pray. And in everything, Lord God, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.